<laughs> what effect do you expect uh, Mr. Annan's visit to Kenya to have on the shilling? Uh, I, I think on overall we are seeing a, a bit of cooling of temperatures, uh, you know, compared to the last one week. Uh, maybe it's because of Anan coming in. But, but on overall I think he'll be happy with the progress that has been made so far, especially in the front of constitutional review because we, we now have the constitutional uh, constitution open uh, for, for views uh, to the public. Uh, but of course there, there are many other measures that need to be taken by the government, uh, especially with regards to protecting uh, witnesses uh, for, uh, in terms of the, pros uh, with regards to the post-election violence, uh, because, the, you know, if they have to give testimonies, then that will, they'll need to have a legal framework to actually take care of that. But, but on overall, I think he'll be generally happy, but I think his main impetus would be just to encourage the government to sort of give the idea that he's still there and sort of with the country. Well, I guess that confidence not really present on uh, the, the equity markets. Um, foreign investors still pretty much waiting in the wings with only 17% uh, trade. Are we like to, likely to see further shedding this week? Well, I, th I think we are entering the holiday season, so, you know, a, a lot of things are starting to shut down, you know, maybe easing a little bit. Um, it, but if you look at foreign activity in the last three weeks, we've seen a lot of interest in Safaricom, uh, where, where investors are very confident about the performance of the company. Um, you know, so I guess investors are now much more sensitive with which counters they're selecting, uh, and that is actually causing a bit of rebalancing in some of the stocks. So we are seeing some going up, others coming down, but, but, but on overall, we, we are seeing much more keen stock picking. Well, one of the stocks that was on the loser board yesterday was the Kenya Power and Lighting Company, uh, which lost to five shillings. Um, and I guess that uh, the, the, the announcement yesterday that government's going to increase its stake in, in the company wasn't uh, very positive news for investors. Um, I don't understand what, what's going on here because government announced today or, or late yesterday that it's planning to privatize around uh, as many as 26 state-owned companies and assets by 2012. Why does it make sense for government to increase its stake in KPLC and uh, do we expect to see further sliding of the stock? Uh, w well, KPLC has uh, many issues under consideration. Uh, what, what the company plans next year is to do a rights issue. Uh, and, and depending on the size of the issue, um, depending how much it's taken up, we might see the stake of the government possibly going up, uh, which might not necessarily be a bad thing because it means, for example, uh, if, if the company is taking loans from private institutions, they can get a government guarantee, which means the interest that they pay on their loans would be would be much lower. And then on, a, on another issue with the company, it would mean that um, if, if there is more funds, they'll be able to really improve their balance sheet. You know, the, the main concern for investors is the dilution. Um, but, but, but the dilution isn't too bad. If you look at the dividend that is paid on uh, the preference shares in the balance sheet, uh, they, they pay an interest of about 7.85%, and the dividend yield for, for, for the ordinary shareholder is about 5.5% 5, 5 or thereabout. Uh, which means it would be positive in, in terms of dividend uh, to actually check up the rights issue next year. And I think the overall restructuring is positive for the company. So I think it was a bit of profit taking because it's rallied quite a bit from about price of about 120 to about 150, 160 thereabout. So I think it was a bit of profit taking and the demand has sort of been easing a bit on that front. Okay, well, moving on, um, news out as well that um, Uchumi investors will have to wait at least a week before they can trade their shares on the NSE anytime uh, soon. Do you think that when that does happen, that we're going to see the same thing that's happening to carb acid, um, which pretty much uh, just keeps dropping uh, every day? Uh, yesterday, it lost another 10%. Uh, well, maybe to clear up on Kabasid, uh, b basically what they did is that they issued uh, a bonus issue of two shares for one. So uh, ideally the price should, um, adjusting maybe from say 300, it should adjust, divide by three, which would be about a price of 100. So I think the price is just correcting to its ordinary level based on the bonus issue. But I think the company has performed very well, you know, if you look at it over the last three or four years when it's been suspended. Uh, in the case of Uchumi, uh, next year, what we are going to see is that um, 
we hope it's going to get released because it's been in suspension because uh, it went into receivership. Uh, but it's, it's improved in performance. Uh, the debenture issue, I'm not sure how successful that would be. It's already closed. Uh, it closed yesterday. Uh, but if, if it turns out well, you know, we can see the lifting of the receivership uh, by end of this year and probably releasing uh, end of next uh, in the first half of next year. But, you know, we, we'll see how that's going to happen. Just kind of looking at um, the announcement by the Capital Markets Authority for new listings um, that, uh, the, that the listing fee will be dropped by 50%. Uh, Do you expect that this is going uh, to, we're going to see a flurry of uh, new listings next year? Well, it's been really difficult to see why we're not getting additional listings. I mean, part of the challenges is that private businesses in Kenya generally don't want to list in the bows. Maybe there the, the reasons too much in incentives in terms of maybe tax. Uh, uh, may, I'm, I'm not sure really what's the case. It's, it's, it's been very puzzling. Uh, uh, maybe we need a sort of uh, maybe the smaller businesses to start listing because the bigger businesses either if it's in terms of cash, maybe the returns, uh, the, the regulatory environment. I think we, we really need to look at it from a holistic perspective. Uh, what requirements uh, does a listing entail to, to a big company or, or, or maybe even a smaller company? I think the main idea is to try and introduce maybe an over-the-counter system where, which doesn't require too many requirements, which doesn't impose too many requirements on a company. And in that case, we'll probably see additional listings and then probably graduate them to the main market eventually. And how does that impact with the Capital Markets Authority of sort of uh, their aim uh, with uh, Ms. Stella Kalonza trying to clean up uh, the market then? I think already we've seen a lot of uh, effort from in that front, and um, uh, in fact, most in terms of if you see in terms of the players, they they're now filing returns on a regular basis, uh, publishing their results uh, in the newspapers, uh, and now basically all the players look uh, quite quite healthy, uh, and despite the market being uh, not not too strong, it, it, it's it's basically offered an opportunity to sort of clean the books. And we are seeing much better corporate governance among the, the various players in the bows. But, but obviously, I think it will take a little bit more time uh, as some of the players recapitalize, because some of them have really had their capital sort of whittled down uh, due, due to the current downturn in the market. And just on uh, those issues of transparency and improving the regulatory environment, uh, the bond market, I wanted to just ask uh, the status of um, the government's uh, second tier of their infrastructure bond. Um, how was that uh, taken up? Uh, well, that closed, I think, yesterday or the day before yesterday. But, but, but basically, the first bond was well taken up. This bond, I think it, it had a bit of challenges, um, so we're just waiting for the results to see how, how well it's been taken up. But the interest, rates is, the interest rate on it is quite reasonable and incentives are quite positive. And especially if you look at Kenya, the inflation rate at 5%, um, the real return for investors is quite high, and especially given the calls by the central bank to reduce their interest rates. In, in general, it might mean that in future investors will be looking at the possibility of lower interest rates. So I, I, I guess it would be very positive if uh, such bonds are taken up.